For our next problem, let's imagine tracking animals, where the only two kind of animals we care about are tigers and snakes. Let's say that for a tiger, what we care about is its color and the number of stripes it has. For a snake, we'll care about its color, its weight, and its favorite kind of food. So given that information, what we see is we need a new type animal, and we have two kinds of animals. We have tigers and snakes. The two different kinds of animals have different information. Tigers have colors and stripe counts, whereas a snake has a color, a weight, and a favorite food. Um, so our data analysis in this case led us to notice that we had two kinds of things, tigers and snakes, and that they had different representations. So that means a new type with two variants, tiger and snake. And then uh, if we're managing our zoo of tigers and snakes, sometimes we need to move them around. So let's suppose we care about a heavy animal function, which takes an animal and tells us whether it's going to be heavy or not. On to the example step. For the example step, again, it's always open paren test, open paren the name of the function. In this case, heavy animal question mark. And then the next thing we write here, heavy animal wants an animal. How do we write an animal? This time we have two choices. We can pick tiger or snake. Every time we write an example, we have to pick one of these cases for animal. So let's pick the first one first, tiger. Then I'll need uh, a symbol for the color and a number for the stripe count. So I picked orange and 14. Are tigers heavy? Let's just say that tigers are always heavy. So our function is going to return true in this case. So that's one example following the steps of open paren test, name of the function, and then picking an animal. We had a choice right here when we wrote tiger, and so we want to make other examples where we make the other choice, the snake example. So our next test, our next example as a test, might be heavy animal of a snake. I had to pick a symbol for the color, a weight as a number, and a food as a string. Um, and then now we define what heavy animal means for snakes. Any snake 10 pounds or heavier, that is going to be a heavy animal. Uh, if a snake is less than 10 pounds, it's not going to count as heavy, so we'll want one more test to demonstrate that. So here's a yellow snake that's only 8 pounds, so uh, that's not a heavy animal. And you see that our examples have covered all of the cases in animal. We've got at least a tiger and at least a snake, and we've also covered the different kinds of results that we get for a Boolean result. With these examples in place, we can move on to the template step. Our heavy animal function takes an animal argument, so that's, let's call it A for animal, and we do a type case on A. We have two possibilities, either it's a tiger or it's a snake. If it's a tiger, we have two parts to work with, C and SC. C is a symbol, SC is a number, that comes from our type definition up here. Um, so there's no functions to call for those, those are just uh, primitive types. And a snake similarly has a symbol for a color, a number for a weight, and a string for a food, all primitive types. So this is our complete template for heavy animal. And then we can fill in the body looking at our examples. Our example says that tigers are always heavy and that for a snake, the only thing it depends on is whether W is greater than 10, greater than or equal to 10. And so we can just write W greater than or equal to 10 there. In this case, the template gave us a lot of pieces that we didn't use after all. SC in the case of a tiger and WF in case of a snake. And that's okay. That's the template template's job just to show you everything you might need, but our examples guided us to finish up the body here with just uh, using neither C and SC in the first case and using W in the second case.